All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here on trig identities. I love trig identities. These are so fun. Uh, what is it, an identity? It's just something that holds true. And so because these are trig identities, they're going to have trig functions that always hold true. And guess what? They relate to the unit circle. Who saw that coming? So let's start with uh, the best, the most famous one, the Pythagorean identity. Let's just draw one of our special triangles. Remember, if we're talking about like pi over 3, we've done this so many times now. We're professional at this. Um, and let's just take a look at this. We're going over x and up y to make these points in these little coordinates. And there's these special values we can find out that are just cosine and sine. So we are really rocking and rolling on that. So x is really what? That's like going, uh, the x value is like the cosine. And the y value is like the sine. Because it's a unit circle, it's 1. So what are we going to do for Pythagorean theorem? It's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is awesome. But instead of using x and y, can we do it with the trig, uh, cosine and sine? Sure. So this is what I really want you to write down. Here is the Pythagorean identity. It's just using um, <clears throat> Pythagorean theorem. So it's cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Awesome. I mean, you can square the 1 if you want. No need to square the 1. Excellent. So write that down, circle it, have it. That is huge. And we're going we're gonna to use these things. But let's, we're going to start off with just kind of driving them here. How can we manipulate this? Are there things we can do? Sure, we can solve this for cosine, can't we? We can just subtract sine squared from both sides. So we get some, we're going to try to build some more identities. Ah, so minus sine squared from both sides. Boom. And then what happens here? These bad boys cancel, and we're left with cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So that's one way to do it right there. Fantastic. Can we go back? Ah, well, I can go easily back, so let's go back. And can we solve it for sine this time? So we can do the same thing, just subtract it, uh, cosine from both sides, and we're going to subtract cosine squared from both sides, and we get another identity here because these bad boys cancel. What does sine squared equal? Well, sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. Excellent. And now here is a list of our identities. Awesome. I'm going to clean it up here real quick. All right, so there they are, the main one. Right here is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you can just remember that one, which is not too bad, you can derive the other ones here. I just kind of moved them around, and it's going to make more sense. We're going to kind of do like some little puzzles and rewriting equivalent statements. Should be awesome. But that's just a manipulation of that one. Fantastic. Let's build some more here. Really, the only other one we're going to do is talk about the reciprocal trig identity. So, again, there's the basic one. So let's go ahead and manipulate this. So I'm going to divide everybody by sine squared. So check out what happens here. If I divide him by sine squared, well, you can't, you got to keep it equal, I got to divide everybody by the same thing. So let's divide everybody by sine squared. And what do you think is going to happen here? Well, what is sine squared over sine squared? They just cancel and give you one. What is cosine over sine? Ah, that's cotangent. Remember those reciprocal trig functions? Boom, there it is. And now we've got 1 over sine. 1 over sine was cosecant. And now we have another trig identity. Woo, there it is. Uh, so this is another trig identity. Can we even manipulate this? Sure, we can subtract 1 from both sides. And we, if we subtract 1 from both sides, what do we get? We get cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x minus 1. So here are some identities that we got to be able to recognize and see. So that gives us cotangent and cosecant are a pair. Can we come over here and kind of do something very similar? Sure, let's have another one right here. But what do you think I'm going to divide by? Oh, you guessed it. We've got cosine squared. So divide everybody by cosine squared. So again, if you can just remember that first uh, Pythagorean identity, you can build the rest of these things. So if you don't want to memorize, I mean, you can memorize them all too. But again, I just like to build them. So what is sine over cosine? That's tangent. There it is. And then cosine oh, cosine is just plus 1. And then what is 1 over cosine? That gives us our secant. So there's 1. If I ever want to know what secant squared is, it's tangent squared plus 1. Or let's just bring the 1 over to the other side. What is tangent really equal if I move the 1 over? It's the same thing as secant squared minus 1. So you have them. You can build them. You could memorize them. However you want to, if you want to go for it, go for that. I like to just build them, write them down, then I have them. So that's all the identities right there. Box them up, circle them. What are we going to do with these bad boys? You're like, what are we doing here, Mr. Bruss? Well, let's, let's go ahead and we're going to rewrite things. So 
We're gonna take an expression here and just rewrite and our goal is to make one single trig identity, one simple trig function. So here are a couple of things we can do. Let's look at this. So I wanna clean this up so it's just one. Well, what is tangent? One of the great ways to do is just write, rewrite tangent as sine over cosine. So I'm just kind of playing with it, see what I can do here, sine over cosine. And then what am I doing? I'm timesing that by cosine. Anything cool happen here? Sure, check it out. Well, these bad boys cancel. This cancels this, and what's left, I'm just sine. So I'm gonna clean things up. Boom, there it is. It just equals sine. Awesome. How about this bad boy? As soon as I see something squared, I'm thinking more of those Pythagorean identities. Is one minus cosine squared? It is an identity. That is just sine squared. So remember how we kind of move things around? And these get easier. At first you're like, what are we doing? But this gets easier and easier as you just kind of play with them. Uh, I just got to practice them. So I can rewrite the top. I know this really is sine squared. I replace it. And then what is sine over cosine? That is just tangent. And because it's squared, that is just straight up tangent squared. Boom, that was my goal, one trig identity. Excellent. Let's try one more. You see anything going on? Boom, I see those squares right there. Uh, anytime I see a squared, I'm thinking Pythagorean identity. And it is, that's just one. That literally is it. Cosine, plus, cosine squared plus sine squared is one. Then on bottom, I like to rewrite things. So I've got sine of x. What is uh, secant? Secant, remember, is one over cosine. So I like to rewrite things if I can. So the top's nice and clean. It's just one, isn't it? So it's just one. What is sine times one over cosine? Well, that's just sine over cosine. And then how do I get rid of a fraction and a fraction? So we were doing that before. If I've got this fraction and a fraction, remember you just kind of flip it, flip the bottom fraction and multiply. So this is really like saying the top's one. I'm going to flip that bottom fraction. And so it's cosine over sine. Aha. And what is that really equal to? Well, one times anything is one. What's cosine over sine? Cosine over sine is just cotangent. So flip the bottom fraction and multiply. There I am. I'm down there. So I know this is kind of unusual at first when you first do them, and they actually get really, really crazy. We're not going to go as in-depth. We're going to keep it pretty chill, especially in this section, just looking at the Pythagorean. Here are some tips I thought you may enjoy here. Um, Number one, try to rewrite it in sine and cosine, especially if you see tangent or secant. Rewrite that in sine or cosine. Uh, anytime you see a squared feature, like the squared, you're looking for Pythagorean identity. And then our goal is if you have a bunch of different things, we're trying to get it all in sine or all in cosine. So just a couple tips I jotted down for you. Um, and then you just got to try it, see what happens. All right, we only got two more problems. But we're cruising here. So can we bring this back into solving equations now? So now we're actually going to solve it like before. Oh, man. What are we going to do over here? So I see this going on. Uh, I see the squared. To me, and when I think of squared, I think, ooh, that's hopefully a Pythagorean identity. Do you remember what secant squared is? Secant squared is really 1 plus tangent. So I'm going to rewrite that as 1 plus tangent squared plus tangent. He was already in there. And all of that equals 1. So it's kind of like instead of cleaning it up, I'm actually expanding this one. This turned into this. And you can put in parentheses if you want, but they don't really matter here, so I'm going to just leave that off. But that's what's going on here. Now let's clean this up. Can I solve this equation? Sure. I'm going to minus 1 from both sides. So I get 0 equals tangent squared tangent. And now it just goes like back to the last section where we're solving these bad boys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to factor it. What do they have in common? They both have a tangent. So let's take that tangent out. And I'm left with tangent x plus 1 if I divide the greatest common factor. And then what am I looking for here? I'm looking for when does the tangent equal 0 will be one answer. And then over here, when does, if I bring the 1 over, tangent x equal negative 1. Awesome. So again, back to the circle because we're finding exact values between 0 and 2 pi. So where does tangent equal zero? Well, tangent sine over cosine, so I'm looking for a sine value of zero. So I believe that's going to happen at zero slash two pi and over here at pi. So there's two places for this one. So we've got zero, pi, two pi, and pi, all the pi's. There we go. And then where does tangent equal negative one? Oh, man, so it's going to happen when x and y are the same or sine and cosine are the same. And it's got to be negative. So where's tangent negative? Remember, it's going to be in the second 
and fourth quadrant. So we're looking for this bad boy over here, this bad boy over here. So, ooh, I missed. Let's just make that dot bigger because I kind of missed. And that's pi over 4. So which pi over 4 is that? The first, the second quadrant is 3 pi over 4. And then the last quadrant is 7 pi over 4. Not quite to 8 pi over 4. And that's what x equals. x equals all of that. So those are all my possible solutions right there between 0 and 2 pi that make that true. That's awesome. All right, one more problem and we're done. We're killing it. Killing it today. Uh, what do you see going on here? Uh, anything exciting? Well, uh, be careful. Uh, this is an identity here. 1 minus sine squared is the identity. I know that looks like sine squared, cosine squared, but the negative kind of messes it up. So we could probably do this other ways and factor and do some things. But this looks chill to me. Let's see what happens when we do this. So 1 minus sine squared is actually cosine squared plus cosine squared equals 2. Well, that's interesting. So what is cosine squared plus cosine squared? There's two cosine squareds all day. There we go. Uh, excellent. And then now can I solve this bad boy? Sure. Just one of our trig equations. Got to get x by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. Whoosh, he's gone. Cosine squared x equals 1. And then remember, I need to get rid of that square root, so I'm going to square root both sides. Just be careful when I square root it, I'm looking for, remember, plus or minus 1. So where in the world is cosine plus or minus 1? So cosine is the x term. It looks like cosine will be 1 over here at 0, 2 pi. It'll be negative 1 over here at pi. So to solve this, this would be when x is 0, pi, or 2 pi. And that is it. So we're just kind of throwing these identities in there, clean things up a little bit. We can still solve. Uh, and that's it. Practices. If you need more practice, check out the corrective assignment. Good luck on the master check. Peace out.